Hello everyone. Um, I'm here to give you a tutorial on the CPU later um, and just kind of walk through the layout of the CPU later that you'll be using for your assembly lab. Um, if you want to have more details about what the CPU later can do and what it's capable of, I highly recommend checking out the CPU later um, instruction manual. Um, it has a lot of nice instructions about what to do. Um, you can actually see it here in the documentation by going to help documentation, and then you'll be able to see all the different types of um, instructions and tutorials and guides about how to use a simulator. But for here is just going to be a, a general overview on how to get it running uh, and provide a, a good entry point for you to start on your assembly lab. So on this right side over here, we have a, all of our general purpose registers. Um, it's really handy to keep track of what different contents and values we have in different uh, registers that we have. We have our gigantic uh, text editor here. Uh, you can use this text editor if you want to, but you can also import in .s files. Uh, so you can, um, theoretically, you can just code up on any different text editor that you want, be it, say, Notepad++, uh, VS Code, anything that you want, and you can just import it over into the CPU later it's just fine. There's a little settings over here, which you can change um, the size of um, your memory that you want to have displayed. You can change the format um, from hexadecimal to decimal, uh, the different words per row, um, and then a whole bunch of different debugging checks. Generally, I would just recommend leaving all of this checked um, over here. It will really help with your debugging process. And then down here is just your messages. Uh, this is where the um, uh, compiler messages, and if there's any compiler errors, um, those will all be down here as well. You have your disassembly over here, which is basically just all the instructions that you've created in your assembly, um, and then as well as the program counter addresses for all of those. And then you have your memory contents over here. OK, so let's actually go ahead and just uh, walk through a very quick example um, just to kind of show you how the CPU later works. Um, so for here, I'll just uh, do a very simple example of loading in um, say a value of four into my register R0. Um, and then I can go ahead and do uh, my ending statements. So yes, and then dot to end. Okay, very, very simple example. And then right here is um, the compile and load um, button. Before you compile and load it, do make sure that your language is set to ARM v7. Um, it does uh, support C, but for the assembly lab, make sure to use an ARM v7 to a program in assembly. Once you make sure this is checked, then you hit compile and load. It compiles just fine. And this right here, it brings you to the disassembly process. So now you can step into your instructions, uh, step over some different uh, branch statements on your instructions, or you can just have it continuously run uh, and just run straight from the start to the end. Generally, I would not recommend to do continue unless you really understand what your program is doing. Uh, simply because when you step into it, it makes a lot more sense on what each line of the assembly process is doing um, and then it can help with your debugging process a, a lot. So over here I'll just go ahead and do a step into. It stepped um, through this instruction and now it went to this um, branch one. As you can see it loaded in the value 4 into my R0. Increase my program counter now since the next instruction is at program uh, address number 4 and now it's in this um, branch statement and it's going to loop through this um, branch statement over and over. So if I continuously do step into, um, it just keeps doing this um, ending uh, statement, this branch statement over and over again. Uh, you can do continue, um, as um, as I said mentioned before, if I hit restart, it restarts the program and I can do a continue. Uh, just like that, now it just continuously runs. Um, and I can go ahead and stop it. Again, like I mentioned before, I generally would not recommend it unless you truly know what your um, code is doing, and you have the necessary end uh, statements here. For example, if I decide to um, get rid of this branch statement over there, compile and load, uh, and go to the dis disassembly process, and then I hit continue, notice now over here we have a little error in our messages. Instruction fetch from a location outside of a code section. This is because uh, we have ended our code and the instructions uh, went through all of our assembly uh, code and now it's trying to reach um, a program counter with the address of which we didn't give it any sort of instruction because we ended our code. Um, so unless you have that necessary ending branch statement, um, doing a continue over here will generally lead to um, an error like this. 
So that's why I'm, I would technically re recommend usually to just use a step into or use a continue if you have the necessary conditions in place. All right. So over here, um, we can save our program as well by doing a control um, S or we can just do a file save. You can save this uh, into your local directory. For example, for here, I'll just call this like a temp.s file, and I can go ahead and save it. Um, you can also load in other .s files. Um, so if I do an open right here, and I have another one right here of an example.s, I go ahead and open it, and it'll then load the instructions onto this text editor over here. Uh, this is a simple addition, so I can go ahead and just do a compile and load. Compile succeeded, and now it brings me to this disassembly process. I can do a step into um, a loads R0 with um, 4, and uh, now loads um, 10, the value 10 to R1, and then it adds both of them and puts it into R2, and then that's it. Uh, you can, if you wanted to, um, reset these values of um, your general purpose registers by just clicking on it hitting zeros, zeros, and zeros, and that would just uh, make sure that it, all of these are reset. Um, this is very useful if, for example, your code is not dependent on loading some values into a register. For example, if I change this one over here and I didn't load 10 into R1, but I just left it in place, do a compile and load. And now if I do a step into, it loads this one with four as instructed. Um, but now it adds whatever value is in R1, in this case now it's 0, into um, adds that with R0 uh, and then puts that into R2. So in this case that would be a 4. If I did a restart and then I put this as, for example, a 3, step into, step into, now this becomes a 7. So this is useful if, for example, your registers um, or any sort of addition or some sort of register manipulation does not require loading in initially uh, a value into your uh, general purpose register. And you can just load it yourself if you wanted to do that. And yeah, that's basically the basic tutorial on um, the CPU later. Um, make sure to work on the assembly lab. And yeah, thank you so much.